Hello, everyone, and welcome back to part three of Bayes' Quantitative Research Practices. So for this presentation, I will be discussing some recommended tools. In the previous two videos, I've discussed the research process as well as writing and publishing a paper. In part four, I will discuss hosting reading groups. So if you are interested in any of these topics, please do check out our YouTube channel. The presentation is divided as follows. I'll be looking at some tools for writing, some tools for finding research, and some tools for learning. Um, I'll end this presentation with my conclusion as well as some references. So let's start with tools for writing. And this is in particular if you're writing a research proposal or you're writing a research paper or anything more general. So if your paper uh, is very quantitative, I can highly recommend writing in LaTeX, which is a great typesetting system. Uh, it is easy to learn. It maybe does have a bit of a learning curve, but still very easy to pick up. And it has a great benefit of having a vast community of users and resources. So if there is something that you're struggling with, maybe you're struggling to compile your LaTeX script, uh, chances are there is a solution for it online. Now, uh, here I would like to talk about a specific uh, text editor called Overleaf, and it has some really great features. So to start off with, it runs completely online in your browser. So no installation is required on your machine and all your work is of course saved online and can be accessed from anywhere. Another great feature of Overleaf is its package support or package management. Um, it claims to support about 4,000 or more uh, packages. Um, and this is really great because if you had to install a local um, text editor like MicTech, for example, um, typically what you would have to do is some package management, which is time and effort. So it's really great that you can just uh, place a package in the preamble of your uh, LaTeX script and Overleaf typically supports it um, from the start. Uh, another great feature of Overleaf is that several people can easily edit the same document. So this is especially useful if you're writing a research paper and you have several co-authors and each needs to add pieces to the research paper or would like to do editing. Now, uh, also when writing a research paper or a research proposal, um, having Proper uh, bibliography is, of course, very important or references. So having something that can efficiently manage your references as well as generate references is, of course, a very convenient tool to have. And I can highly recommend Mendeley for this. So Mendeley can be downloaded um, as a client on your desktop for uh, use, or uh, you can use it uh, in, your in your browser using, for example, Mendeley Web Importer. So it also has some great features. For example, it can organize your sources using groups, tags, and filters. Uh, so uh, if you have a very vast um, library of papers, uh, searching through these uh, papers can be quite a difficult task, especially if it's papers that you can't remember very well. Um, so uh, grouping them, tagging them, and being able to filter through things efficiently is, of course, a very nice tool to have. Uh, it's also really great for generating references. Um, so you have some paper, you would like to reference it in your research paper, but uh, you maybe uh, don't want to write it out uh, every time you need it. So Mendeley can generate this automatically for you. And in particular, uh, it can output it into a BibTeX file, which is something you then add to your LaTeX um, and it will automatically uh, generate your references for you. Uh, and finally, it's got some nice extra features in that it can highlight and annotate papers that you're maybe reading. So speaking of bibliography generation, I can also recommend Zotero Web. Uh, it is also online and it's really easy to use. Uh, there are other um, bibliography generation um, generators, um, but I'll discuss this one for now. Uh, 
the great thing about Zotero Bib is that it supports over 9,000 citation styles. So chances are, if you want to cite uh, things in a very specific way, Zotero Bib would support it. Um, it is also, as I mentioned, simple to use. Um, it only needs a single piece of key information, such as the ISBN number, a URL, or the title of the paper. And it should be able to find it and generate uh, the reference for you. Similarly, similarly to Mendeley, it can also output things in several formats, including the tech. So let's move on to the task of finding research papers. And this is, of course, very important when you are doing your literature review. Uh, you want to efficiently um, and quickly find the best research papers. So let me mention Google Scholar, which is probably familiar to everyone watching this video. Um, it searches through books, articles, and theses from a wide range of sources, such as academic publishers, universities, and online repositories. Um, it also gives some key pieces of information, such as a brief description of uh, each paper that's listed in your search results, as well as the citations, which gives you an indication, of course, of how important the paper has been. It also has some nice extra, uh, a nice extra feature, such as a uh, reading list for saving papers for later. Another great um, tool for finding research papers is Ethos. And uh, Ethos is a vast online repository of over 5, 500,000 doctoral theses. But do note that this is only from UK institutions, but it's still very useful though. Uh, the great thing about it, it's freely accessible to the public, but you do need to register an account though. A nice feature um, about Ethos is if you remember a doctoral thesis from a UK institution that you read perhaps years ago, but you may be struggling to find it online, uh, you can submit a request form to Ethos and they will try and find the doctoral thesis. And if they do find it, they will upload it to their repository. So that's quite a nice feature to have. Uh, then I would also like to mention the archive, which is also probably familiar to uh, many people. So the archive is a preprint server. And the great thing about it, it's freely ac um, accessible to the public. But maybe a word of caution here. Because it's a preprint server, um, it is not peer reviewed. So be careful of the papers that you're reading on the archive. Typically, when a researcher publishes a paper in a research journal, they may have a preprint version on the archive. So I would encourage you to uh, look at these papers that have analogous versions in a peer reviewed research journal. So this is really great if you're trying to access a paper um, from a research journal, but maybe cannot afford to pay for the cost of accessing the paper. Uh, you can maybe try the archive then. So it does have a quantitative finances repository. And the great thing about uh, all the repositories on the archive is that it also gets updated every day with new papers. And then finally, to end this section, I would like to mention a very interesting tool called Connected Papers. So this is a visual approach to finding research papers. And what Connected Papers does is if you search for a paper um, in their uh, search bar, it will generate a graph um, consisting of papers that are similar to it. So um, it analyzes about 50,000 papers and as metrics to determine similarity, it will use curse citation and bibliographic coupling. Um, some nice extra features that it has, um, you can click on a node in the graph um, and there will be a description of the paper um, and some nice interesting information such as the citation count. So let's move on to the final section, which is learning. So often when you are looking um, at some research topic or you're trying to break into a new research field, there are some skills that you might need um, to learn. So a very well-known example, of course, to everyone, but worth mentioning here is YouTube. So YouTube has a fantastic online, um, a fantastic uh, uh, repository 
of free online learning material that anyone can access. And maybe just to give a good example, um, I would recommend taking a look at the topics in mathematics with applications of finance by MIT OpenCourseWare, which is um, of course freely available on the OpenCourseWare site, but also on, on YouTube. And there are many, many other different topics that you can look at um, for free on YouTube. Uh, then next, I would like to mention Massive Open Online Courses, or MOOCs, which are also um, probably well known to everyone, uh, in particular, such as Coursera or edX. But unlike YouTube, uh, note that you may need to pay um, to have full access to some features. So for example, um, MOOCs have grading systems as well. And to have your assignments or projects graded, uh, you may need to pay for it. Uh, great examples from Coursera is data structures and algorithms, uh, specialization. Uh, if you want to get your uh, programming skills, um, to up upskill on your programming skills. Or if you're interested in machine learning, uh, there are many courses uh, available at different levels, from beginner to more advanced uh, specializations. So with that, I would like to conclude this video. Um, I've looked at the following points. Uh, so I've mentioned some great tools for writing, some great tools for finding uh, research papers, and some great tools for learning. If you know of more great tools, please do mention it in the comments below. We are definitely interested in hearing more. And I will uh, present my references in case uh, you wanted to uh, look more at these uh, tools that I've mentioned. Um, and with that, I would like to thank you for your time. And if you have found this content interesting and would like to see more content as well in terms of quantitative finances, um, please do visit our YouTube channel. Thank you.